negative camber, which uh, this 2011 Ford Fusion calls for at the rear, is when the top of the wheel leans inwards. Of the three components involved in wheel alignment, camber is by far the easiest to measure. I have placed the laser level on the floor, center rear of the car, maybe about four feet away from it. For camber, left to right level of the vehicle is more critical. This horizontal laser line stretches across to both wheels. The left side was a bit lower than the right, so I added a little bit of air in the tire. Now the vehicle is perfectly level left to right. We'll start by having a look at the camber on the left rear. I like to have the laser level position within reach so that I can kind of turn it a little bit. The laser beam should be fairly parallel to the vehicle, but it doesn't have to be exactly. I've turned the laser level slightly so that it would be at the one inch mark here at the bottom. At the top, we're measuring two sixteenths more than one inch. Not very good. Let's go over the right hand side. I've adjusted the beam to be at the one inch mark at the bottom. And we're measuring very close to 1 and 11 sixteenths at the top. So that's 11 sixteenths of negative camber. So we have the right hand side here that's pushing the limit on too much camber. And we have the left hand side that has slightly exceeded the limit on not enough camber. Not good. Like I should have expected it, like our roads up here are just horrendous. Uh, we have a reputation for it actually. Um, we're in what's uh, called the clay belt. It's this uh, purple crap. And uh, if you try to dig a hole in it, you got to beg to uh, get your shovel back. Like it's just awful stuff and there's a lot of water retention. Combine that with the fact that we get some extremely cold winters here. General Motors has set up shop for their cold weather testing uh, center because you can pretty much rely on some cold weather. Combine the two, soaked clay with a uh, deep freeze and the expansion like will just rip your streets all apart. So it pretty much means that I'm going to have to get my coveralls and crawl underneath there and uh, see if I can free up those cam bolts that uh, adjust the camber. So I thought I'd take you guys in here. <laughs> Why should I have all the fun? I moved it uh, two notches on the cam. And we'll see what that does. This will have the effect also of changing the toe adjustment. Uh, although that's the subject of the uh, next video. While I'm here, I'm going to put a little bit of penetrating oil on that turnbuckle. I'm pretty sure that I'll end up having to move that. Right rear, this is the side that had too much camper in it. We're at the one inch mark here at the bottom. Inch and a half at the top. So now we have half inch of negative camber. Um, it's called for 7 16 and it gives us a quarter inch of uh, tolerance either way off of that. So that's pretty good. Left rear, the side that uh, started out with not enough camper, one inch at the bottom, inch and three eighths at the top, that too is well within specs. So I checked out the front end and uh, first was uh, making sure that uh, it was level left to right. I put the laser level on the floor again. It's a little tighter to get in there and do that measurement, but it did work out. The specifications on the front call for zero, plus or minus four sixteenths on either side of that. So on the right hand, I had negative four sixteenths of camber. Still with inspect. The left hand side had two sixteenths positive camber, still within specs. And there's nothing that can be done about it because there's no adjustment in the front, as is the case in most modern vehicles. That also includes the caster. Uh, most uh, vehicles, uh, you're going to be changing components. Um, there is no adjustment. So if you're not within specs, maybe something was bent, something is worn, 
something is broken, and uh, but you're not looking at adjustments. That concludes the camber portion of the wheel alignment series. See you next for toe adjustment.